Well, over the years, the Whitetail Diaries Deer Camp has hosted many Cabela's representatives, from first timers to seasoned hunters. But this year's no different. We have Dan Gurr from the Archery Division of Cabela's here with us as he goes after his first Texas Whitetail. First time ever <laughs> doing a big game hunt out of the state that I live in. Yeah, coming out, it was uh, about two months ago. Uh, I got the invitation to come out and I probably haven't slept for about two months. <laughs> you know, it was nerve wracking. Just coming in, thinking about what you would see, what you might see, what you might not see. And, uh, you know, just going through with all the different deer that hopes and dreams uh, come through. Dan started off his morning hunt in a pair of tripods where the deer have shown up well in archery range. So I've never really been to Texas out in the country anywhere out here and it was it was amazing I mean it was it was eye-opening it's something I've never seen before it was it was absolutely amazing I couldn't ask for anything more you know I could have sat there for hours that's hunting all day long I mean it's not killing it's it's hunting you know acorns were falling they were out there whitetail could have been a hundred yards away and we would have had no idea I mean, the spot we were in, you had maybe 60 yards of view. Uh, what you could see, it was pretty brushy. And I mean, you would have no idea. If they were 80 yards out, you, you just wouldn't know. But they could have been quite content just hanging out and doing what they do right out there with no idea. So after a slow morning hunt, Dan refuels back at camp and Wade has a place in mind that'll put Dan's archery skills to the test. Get ready for the, the evening hunt and uh, we're talking about going, you know, we're going out of the killing tree. You know, we've heard stories about the killing tree and it sounds like a killer place. We have Dan Gurr from Cabela's set up in the ever famous killing tree. You know, you ask, well, why is it called the killing tree? And so, well, you'll just see when we get there. So we get in there and no later than, you know, within four minutes after we get set up in the stand, uh, there's a doe coming in. I couldn't see anything because the brush in the way and I look in the pond and I see the reflection of the deer. So right there. You know, four minutes sitting in the stand, there's deer there. Before you know it, within 30 minutes, I mean, there's deer everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I mean, they're coming in from the right, they're coming in from the left. It, w it was amazing. I've never been in a spot and seen that many deer come in like that and just move around. You know, you look over and way back in, you see about 200, 220 yards out, you just see big buck, big buck coming through, working his way down. And it was, it was amazing seeing it. You see a bruiser just slow walking, just taking his time and you see that rat coming through. And it was, it was cool. It was amazing. <laughs> Just a bruiser, I mean, you can tell, just big body. But even see, I mean, we're looking at everything, there's so much going on, and all of a sudden, you know, Jeff hollers over and look at the water hole. And I couldn't even, with the shadowing and the tree branches the way it is, 
um, there's a deer on the far side of that pond and he's in there drinking. I couldn't see his antlers, I couldn't see anything with the shadowing, I just seen the body. And it was big, it was a big buck. through and there was a lot of other I mean there was good shooters right in that pond right there in the watering hole and we're hoping he's gonna walk through and, and come right to where you need him to go and he works his way around and just out of sight I mean just in the trees just in the brush he wouldn't come quite to where we could get a shot or where we could see him and then he seen a doe he seen something he liked out in the field and man he just boogied he boogied across the field Well, with a big buck choosing a doe over Dan, Dan sets his sights on the other shooters that are still hanging around the killing tree. You know, he's milling out, so I instantly start looking, and there's, there's two great bucks. There's 11 point, there's a nine point, and they're just hanging out right, right about 30 yards, just watering and going in there. And, you know, it, for me, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna wait and chance and see if the, if the big one comes in and regret that for years to come. You know, I'm gonna go in and those bucks were just, they were too good to pass up. And they kept stacking up. One time I came to a partial draw and as soon as I did, they just stacked up and, you know, I, you're not going to take the shot. You're not going to take the shot when there's steer stacked within deer and chance wounding another deer. Oh my God. Oh, I gotta sit for a second. Out, man. I'm looking at everyone just thinking man that's that's a shooter that's a shooter that's a shooter you know I, I would take about any one of them deer and it's just waiting for the right deer you know it's waiting for the the, the mature deer uh, to come through that you know needs to be got man just seeing him out there with that you know that mass of tines ooh, it got my heart racing it was it, it was amazing. As soon as he stepped into that spot where I knew he was a good, just partially cordon away and just standing there ready for me, it was, it was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to go ahead and take him. That's the biggest buck I've shot in my life. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna pass that up in the New York second. <laughs> but I took out, uh, 
this time was the Cabell's Insurgent. Um, it's a new bow we came out with. We've had it uh, for all of 2017. It's the shooter's bow. It's comfortable. It's going to do everything you need. This is not a bow you can go anywhere else and get. I mean, it, there's other bows that may look similar, um, may perform similar, but this bow, you can only get at Cabela's. Broadhead that we use is the Incision Malice. Um, it's a three blade uh, front deploy. It's a two inch cut diameter. It's a great blade. We're, we're really excited about this one. With a solid shot on his personal best, Dan heads back to camp to give the deer some time and regroup with Wade. We came back into camp, got Wade, got the video, got it up on the big screen, and sure enough, shot looked perfect. I mean, it looked absolutely great. And determined, I mean, as soon as we saw it, you know, it, it probably, it's not going more than 100 yards. It had some great food, good eats while, <laughs> while we were watching that. And, you know, it was, it was, I was getting pretty pumped up. I mean, you're eating great food, you're watching the perfect shot, and nothing could be better. I mean, it was, it was absolutely awesome. The Whitetail Diaries crew is assembled and joins Dan in tracking and hopefully recovering the biggest buck Dan has ever shot. Dan, you lead the way. We'll be right behind you. We'll get to looking and doing our thing. Right there. Bunch of he's bleeding all over right there. Oh, he's bleeding a bunch. Turn, just like all of them. <laughs> yep, right there. Big pile. They all go that way every time. Bigger spots. Oh yeah. Bush there. There's the arrow. Right here. Yep. Yep. That's what you like to see. Yes, it is. There's a lot of blood on there. Bunch right there. Bunch here. Bunch here. right there. Split. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. He, he didn't make it too far. <laughs> oh. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a perfect shot when you look at play that one back. Oh, jeez. Just looks oh. awesome. Look at oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Great shot. <laughs> what a cool bike. That is cool. Has he still got velvet, a little bit of dried velvet on Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yep. Wow. He didn't go anywhere, buddy. No, he didn't. <laughs> you made a perfect <laughs> shot. The reaction was priceless. That's the reason why we do this. Oh. I don't, it never gets old. What a great deer. What a great deer. He still has a lot of velvet up there on the back end. Yeah. He just came out. <laughs> Congrats, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Thank you. It was, it was amazing. I mean, it was absolutely amazing coming up and seeing that buck, seeing that it, you know, knowing that it didn't suffer. It, it you know, it didn't live long. It, it was a good shot. It was a good placement, and going up and finding that just right there it was, it was amazing. It was, it was super cool. You know, that's the most exciting part of what we do to me is 
you get to watch somebody that comes into Texas or hunts some place for the first time and you get to see the excitement, you see the emotion, you, you see the shake, you see the after effects, and then you get to track it and find their deer. I mean, to me, that's, you know, that's just like all of us were successful on the hunt. I mean, that to me makes, makes the whole day, the whole year kick off the right way. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, it's such a neat experience to come out here, seeing the amount of deer, the situation where it was, I've never experienced that in my life. I mean, it was, it was magical. Bow and arrow, I've been hooked on since I was 12 years old. And it's just the difference when you come in and, you know, when you go out and you do muzzleloader, you know, 90% of the time you're within 100 yards. Uh, rifle, you know, you can get out a couple hundred yards, but archery, you're just, you're so close to the game. I mean, it's up close, it's personal. Being that close, up and personal with the animals is, is amazing. It's a different feeling. Hey, congratulations, Dan, on a successful bow hunt and entry into the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries.